Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can build a single formula calendar with dynamic arrays. So here I've got a single formula, and if I press F2 we can see that it's referencing this single date cell here. And this is a dynamic array, so this single formula is generating our entire set of values here. And so here we're in July 2019. And July 2019, the first was a Monday, and there's 31 days. Let's come up here and let's change this to August. And we can see that our calendar updates, and August started on a Thursday and also has 31 days. So let's take a look at how we can build this single formula calendar. So first off, we're gonna to have to set up a couple preliminary calculations. So here's the date that we're gonna base our calendar on. And the first thing we need to do is find out what the first of the month is for that date. And to do that, we're gonna use the end of month function. And we're gonna take our date and we're gonna offset it by negative one month. And let's just press enter and see what happens. So we end up with the previous month. So here we're in July and with the end of month function, we're in June because we offset it with this minus one. But what we actually want is the start of the month. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna add one to that. And that'll get us to the first of the month. The next thing we're going to do is find out what day of the week our first of the month is. And there's a function for that. So weekday is going to tell us the weekday of our date. And there's a optional argument here that allows us to pick uh, what number is returned for what day. But we're just going to stick with the default, which is that a Sunday is a one. A Monday is a two, etc., all the way through Saturday, which is a seven. And since it's optional, we can not include that. And we get a result of two. And just to confirm, let's use the text function with our date. And that will return the weekday name. So we can see that's a Monday. And that corresponds to our weekday function that returns a two. So remember, one is a Sunday, two is a Monday, etc., all the way up to seven, which would be a Saturday. Next, we're going to create an offset value, and we'll take a look at why we're doing this later. But for now, this is just going to be minus one times our weekday number plus five. And in this example, it's minus seven. And now we're ready to start creating our calendar. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the sequence function to create a range of numbers for our calendar. So sequence is one of the new dynamic array functions, and it just allows us to create a sequence of values. So our calendar is always gonna be seven rows by seven columns. So seven rows is just the minimum number that's always gonna fit our calendar and seven columns because we have seven days of the week. And here is where we're gonna use our offset. So we're gonna start our sequence at minus seven and then we're gonna increase by a value of one. Let's press enter and see what we get. So remember July starts on a Monday and you can see that here one is uh, corresponds to our Monday. And then we go down all the way to 31. And we also have these strange values that we don't want in our calendar. So we have 32 all the way up to 41. We don't want that in our calendar. And we also have these negative numbers here up to zero. So the reason we're using this offset is because we want to reserve this first row always for our column headers eventually. So eventually we're gonna replace these with the names of the weekdays. 
So having this offset value here is going to ensure that this first row is reserved for us. And the first of the month starts on the second row. The next step is we're going to get rid of these values here. And we're just going to turn them into a empty string or a blank value. So the first step to do that is we're actually going to create a date for each of these numbers here. And so we're going to use the date function and we need to supply the year, month and day for our date function. So the year, we're just going to grab using the year function and our date. We're going to do the same thing with the month. So we're going to get the month from our date up here. And then the day we're going to grab from our sequence here. Now, when we select the entire range, notice that the reference we create is E2 and then this pound sign. That means it's going to be dynamically referencing our range here. So this is our dynamic array range, and this is how we reference our dynamic array. Let's close that off and see what happens. And I'm just going to quickly format this as a date so we can see what we have. And you can see that for the numbers before one, so negative seven through to zero, what we have is a date in June, right? And then we have our dates in July. So July 1st here, all the way up to July 31st. And then after that, we get a date in August. So that corresponds to our 32 here. That becomes August 1st. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to test to see if this date has the same month as our date here. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in the month function to actually get the month number. And let's just turn this back into general formatting so we can see what we have. And now you can see that a bit more clearly. So here we have six. So for our negative seven through to zero, we have a month number of six, and then we have our month of seven, so July, all the way up to here where we go into uh, 32. That becomes an eight. And so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an if function to test whether this is a seven or not. So let's come back up here and edit this formula and let's use if and we're going to test if this value here that we're generating is equal to the month of our date. So our single date value. And if it is equal, we want the value from our sequence. And if it's not equal, then we just want to return an empty string or something like that. So we don't want to return anything. And then you can see now we just have one through 31 and then the rest of those values are blank here. And let's just change the width there. And now we're ready to take this and combine it with our column headings. And to do that, we're going to use the choose function. So let's come up here. And let's create a choose function. And the first argument in our choose function is the index number. So this is the thing we're going to choose. We'll come back to that in a second. So I'm just going to skip it for now. And we're going to be choosing from our column header and our actual calendar values here. And now let's go back to our first argument here, the index number. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a constant array. 
So we're going to use these curly braces. That's how we create an array with a constant value. And what we want is we're going to choose the first row to be our first item. And then after that, we're going to choose our six other rows to be from our second item. So I need six twos there. And actually, I don't want commas. I want semicolons here because we're dealing with rows. And now let's press enter. And here you can see that our first row is this set of column headers. And then after that, we're taking our values from here. So the first row, we get our values from here. And the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh row, we get our values from this calendar here. Another way to do that, if you aren't comfortable with creating a constant array here, we could just create the array ourselves in the Excel workbook. So here our first row is coming from our first range, and then our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rows are going to be coming from this range here. And we could do something like this. Instead of having a constant array, we could just reference that array of values there. It's going to give us the same thing. And if you want, then you can come here and reference that range. So highlight that range in our formula. And if we press F9, that's going to evaluate it for us. And you can see that what we get is our curly braces and the first item is one, two, and two till the end there. So we built this in a couple different steps, but what we can do now is just combine all those steps into one single formula if we want. So I'm going to create a copy of this formula and just come down here and paste that there. And if I press F2, then what I'm going to do is just replace these references that I see here with those formulas. So I'm going to copy this and come back to my formula here and replace it there. And I'm also going to come here and instead of this range reference into my workbook, I'm going to highlight that and press F9 and turn it into a constant. So our Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc., is not going to be changing. So we can just have that as a constant instead of a range reference. And there we go. Now we have just a single formula that's generating this entire calendar, including the column headings. And it's referencing just our single date value here. So there we go. That's how we can create a single formula dynamic array calendar. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.